being present in your more present in your business. Um, what is that starting to look like? What is that starting to feel like um, in in the businesses of of John Templeton? Mm, great question, and I think um, it's just specifically to that last part, right? It's just it's more so clarity. It's more so just less smoke, um, and it's a willingness. It's a willingness to 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 put yourself into uncomfortable positions, but even more so than a willingness, it's like a carelessness um of that like that that's sort of the way i'm feeling with 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 regards to that i think you know something we've touched on before is just that the purpose of life or perhaps the way life moves it's that pendulum right it's about finding balance then being unbalanced and then finding balance and moving through that journey which is so interesting because moving into this place i find balance in some areas and i lose touch of other areas and that's just the scale it's just the the, the, the journey of evolution um, to, to bring that back all into one. Um, I suppose that's how to answer that question. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's changed a lot and it's, it's exciting and that's what inspires the movement, um, the strength to push and pivot in, in other areas, to take it to the next level. Yeah, 100%. Um, but for yourself, because once again, I've been inspired um, by a lot of the moves that my mentors in the past have made. You know what I mean? That's that's a position I put myself in. There's it's always to it's always to be around these people that inspire you, right? So um, how have you felt moving from level to level? And um, what, what are some key things perhaps that you can give to the viewers today? Um, how not to be overwhelmed, yeah. Mm, how not to be overwhelmed by being overwhelmed. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can man, answer. <laughs> you, yeah, you just gotta you just gotta go with it, eh? Um, you just gotta go with it. I found um my big scary rent jump for me, like my place jump was when I had that place in the viaduct, a um, thousand bucks a week, didn't make any sense. Parking was like 500. So it was like an unnecessary 1500 outgoing weekly on top of all business expenses, on top of the mortgage that I pay on this house that, that I own. Um, it was like almost stupid, um, but something said do it. Something said it's right. Um, and, and I had enough money to sort of like sort out the first few months and then I would have to do something, right? Um, but I just done it. Uh, and, and I learned so much. I learned, firstly, I got to fucking enjoy the place, you know, let's, let's, let's not talk about the learnings, just lose ourselves in what we all learn, but you get to enjoy the amazing moment. Like that the balcony was amazing, waking up there, living in the city, the city life, commercial bay, um, Lismos, Brita Mata was an experience for, for those months. Right. Um, but it also taught me deeper of what I already do have. Like I always saw this home as a liability. Like I was always trying to get out of this home, um, but this is a $2 million asset. And then it took me coming back to this to realize like, shit, this is my $2 million asset, you know? And, and uh, it's almost like a maturing man is as you, as we go out and we explore life and we have amazing experiences, um, we, we also begin to realize what we have always had. And I feel like, that sort of weird journey of going out there and shooting for the stars. Like as you start reaching the stars, you realize that you had earth all along, you know, um, mm -hmm. and there's just, it just comes to a point of like um, a point of presence where you just realize more and more um, what this moment is about. And, and that brings clarity in so many areas. I could go on a massive tangent in business. Um, but what about for you, Kanji? Uh, in terms of presence and what we're both saying, is there anything that's sparking up within you? Yeah, I, I feel as though that like, um, you know, with any move, whether it's personal, business, relationship, it's like the level finds you. It, it's so it's so beautiful to, to see it from that lens. It's like the level will always find you because you're always ready for it, right? Um, especially with this place and what you said, man, it's like I've always viewed as, this place is like a getting away from my parents' place. But I also realized that I also have my parents' place as well, which I can go back to whenever I feel like it. Um, and looking at it from that lens, I'm like, oh my God, like it's so beautiful that you do have all these pockets of places where you can call home. And it's not the place that you call home, it's the moment right here, right now that you call home. Um, just like with this place, especially, and with business, it's like, we can always find the fun. There's always something fun about business. There's always something fun about where we're staying, um, even if it doesn't seem like fun at the time. Um, and when you do find that, it's like, that's, that's you. That's always been you. 
Um, and when you realize that's always been you, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Like how, like other areas that you may not find as fun, how do you find presence in that? Like, how do you find the fun in that? Um, you know, we've all made levels, we've all shifted, like some of us jobs, some of us, you know, um, you know, being self-employed, doing the hustle, getting to a point in your business and then realizing you're here now, um, you know, all those different levels found you. Um, and it was so beautiful for me just to really recollect all the moments as well in my journey and for the viewers as well and for you gents as well. It's like you, you start again, it's like connecting the dots backwards. Um, but it's always so beautiful just to be here and now because in this present moment, there's nothing else that really matters. It's like the future, yeah, that's cool. We've got visions, we've got goals, we've got everything, and that's awesome. Like that's creative. That's the mind loves that. Um, there's also the past as well, and you can use that and put your chip on your shoulder and you'd be like, man, that's awesome. But in this moment, like this is everything. Like nothing needs to be done. You feel so peaceful, you still feel, feel so whole. Um, you know, just having this chat with you, gents, it's just like, man, you know, this is this is my world. Uh, I'm I'm so much enjoying this right now. But yeah, <laughs> that's my flow. <laughs> I don't know what you check up, but I, I'll pass it on to you, John. I'm loving that. It's it's taking me on like an interesting like tangent with everything that's happening, and it's like it's yeah. We, we you need to put yourself in a position um, to need that presence and that awareness, and and typically you want to navigate um, through the unknown, right? So like the wall socket in my mind right now is that presence and that awareness and you must plug that in with energy um, and in order to do so in my mind right is to put yourself in these these uncomfortable positions and this is not just about property this is about about everything right because that in my experience um, develops well, firstly, what we think of usually before we put ourselves into that position is the bad. We think anxiety, we think fear, we think this, this and that. But when you find yourself in that position, and I'll refer to something I heard a while ago, it's not going to be quoted because I can't remember it word for word, but put someone in the water in the middle of the ocean who wants to die and see how hard they fight for their life. You know what I mean? So when you, when you put yourself into these uncomfortable positions, you find um the probably wrong word here but adrenaline you find so much energy you find so much excitement and inspiration and then you overcome something and then you feel inspired and you feel more momentum develop and you you, you grow through that um so the point i'm making there is um as as we are hardwired we are programmed um through such a long period of time to to think about the bad right um but in order to find that presence and awareness we're going to need to <laughs> we're going to need a reason um, and we're going to need to, um, you know, put ourselves in that position in order to grow in business, all areas, all areas. Was there something that spoke to you in that shant? I'm sure there's a completely different angle we can attack that from. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's about taking your shot um, pun intended with the analogy that I'll share. I was watching um, a UFC fan. I was watching uh, Stylebender's recent YouTube upload. And it was just a recap of his fight with Derek Brunson. But he always had sprinkles in his thought process, like his chapter of his life. He said that fight week in um, Madison Square Garden, he went, <coughs> he went to a, um, excuse me, an NBA game right before. And before the, before the game started, um, uh, one of the players offered him the ball going, hey, do you want to take a shot? Um, and like, he was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, he actually showed the recording like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to miss in front of everybody. And then after that, he said he was sharing with the, the viewers that like, man, um, that was a moment. That was an experience. And I turned it down because I cared what everyone else would think in the arena. And then he said that 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 chipped away at him for ages. And then a, a year later, he was in MSG again. And the same guy actually asked him again. And he was like, how are you? And he took heaps of shots, hella air balls, but he was in the experience. Um, and, and like what he was really saying is just ultimately take, take your shot. Um, who the fuck cares what other people think? Um, only thing that's that you're going to lose with worrying about your thoughts about other people is life. You're going to lose the experience. You're going to miss the moment, right? Um, and that's sort of what I felt is, you know, everyone out there has a dream. Um, everyone out there has a, has a passion, um, something that they love and they wish they could do it, you know, for, for their lifestyle. But there's a whole series of thoughts on why they believe they can't do it. And the... The way to make that a reality is firstly 
chuck yourself in, into that deep, the deep waters where you have to face all of these thoughts to see, like, are you going to fight and unlearn all of these? Or are you just going to fold and keep doing what you've always done? So the sitting on the fence thing, man, like any human can sit on the fence for a fucking lifetime and many do, but it's so beautiful when um, you can just say, fuck it. You come to these realizations, you maybe listen to something like this and this is that moment and you're listening to this thinking like, man, um, if, if I could do anything for the rest of my life, I'd just love to do this. Go do it. If it's, if it's start a business and you know absolutely nothing about business and you got no money, just start a page and do something and get absolutely roasted and go bankrupt if you fucking have to. But I guarantee you're going to learn what not to do from that process to become the businessman that you've always wanted to become. And that's an extreme scenario. But um, that's what I really get is from what I'm hearing about your move. Um, my experiences, I know Kanji, um, when it comes to swimming in the deep end, you can probably resonate. Um, but shooting your shot and just living your life and experiencing the moments is, is what, how I would summarize that. But, um, man, I know you've probably experienced a lot of jumps, redundancies, extreme financial crisis, highs and lows. Um, you have anything to add or touch on? Yeah. Um, it, it's this whole thing, especially with what you both said, it's like the uncom uncomfortable situation. It's just our thoughts of that situation it was it was that move for you to shift it's like you could live like you both said like you live your same life every single day right and it's just the same day every single day like groundhog day or you can live every day differently and living your day every day differently it's like it, it's it's so different it's especially you know my experience is like redundancy um you know jumping into business caring what other people think, just being that guy that's like going against the mold and then realizing that it wasn't him against anyone else, but him against himself and him against his thoughts. And it's just so beautiful to see is like, I was fighting like an invisible battle with myself. Um, and when you bring it back to today, here and now, it's like, you know, th there's so many opportunities that are out there that we don't see because of our thoughts of what will they think of me? You know, I'm scared of this, you know, I'm, I'm not in this position as yet. I love to be, but, you know, I really can't because, you know, I've got like obligations, I've got um, bills, I've got family that says this about me. It's all thoughts. It's all thoughts about what other people think of you. And then when you just remove that and you just do what you love and, you know, for all of you as well, it's like, you know, um, I know you, Shen and, and John and like your clients all do what they love um and what we do as a guide is we you know extract that thought process it's like we give them that belief we give them that yeah you can do what you love this is how it is this is the structure this is the pathway this is the creativity and how you can actually innovate from that and from that you realize you know there's there's so much that you can actually do when you don't have thoughts into it it's like you've I think our, our mentor Steve put an analogy is like you bake a cake and then you put thoughts into it and then the thoughts put like a little bit of poison into this cake and you're like giving this cake to people. Um, so that's the analogy. It's like when you take thoughts away and it's just full presence and awareness, it's like you're just giving people that love, that joy, that gift. Um, and, you know, without any thoughts, you can simply do what you love. And obviously at that time, you may feel like, how do I do this? how to do that, you know, the question of how is very, you know, prominent in the human's mind, you know, just see it, just start observing that how it's like, you know, there's so many people in this world that have done what you've done, just like what we've done. We've done a lot of things and the people listening to this, Dev, you know, you, you probably listen to them and say, oh, well, wow. like you're actually doing something that I'm not doing right now. Um, and when you put yourself in a position like this, where you just explore and create and, just be curious. Um, there's so many opportunities that are literally right in front of you. So um, yeah, like Shen said, just take a shot. <laughs> Man, I'm hearing so much from you guys, you know, um, and I want to extend on your point a little bit, Shen, um, because it, it's, it's so relevant and it's hard, right? It can be challenging, especially in the moment. I can 100% resonate with that. And a lot of the time it's actually unconscious as well. Right, uh, actually, majority of the time, which is the sad thing. It's a great thing because it gives you the opportunity to find it and to change and evolve, right, and to improve. But you know, we take action typically based off 
um, a lot of the time at least of, of what other people are going to think of us or perhaps what we think of us. So we're moving based off that ego that doesn't necessarily align with the real values. It doesn't necessarily align with what is truly right for you. And I think that's so interesting. Um, just looking back now, how many times I've done that, how many times that didn't lead to presence and awareness, how many times that led to pain. Um, and, and then I had to make that decision to, to grow through that once I'd experienced enough pain. So it's interesting, you know, looking, looking at yourself and always coming back to that fundamental thing, you know, knowing what you want, knowing what you want, because to find presence and awareness, it's a tool and you need to sharpen that tool. So knowing what you want and then knowing as well that it's possible, knowing that it's been done many, many, many times, you don't need to attach yourself to other people's idea of enjoyment and success. What you want is possible. What you want is real. It's very real. And it's right around you. That's a different story, right? But it's it's very real. And then knowing that um, to put yourself in that energetical space with real things, people, materials, um, so that you can be immersed and exposed in it, um, it changes everything so quickly. And then all of a sudden, you're not just getting lucky every now and then. When you suddenly seem to be in a cool environment around cool people, you have this moment of presence. You think, wow, this is awesome. You actually have the axe now ready to ready to chop. You know, you can actually, you can actually find awareness in every moment and, and presence um, and not be so consumed by the chaos. Like obviously right now, just getting this new apartment in the city, lots of chaos, lots of movement. I, see, I hear some people fighting over there. I hear some motorcycles over there. I hear this, this and that. It's, it's yeah, it's fascinating. So just sharpening that tool by knowing what you want. Mm. Um, and once again, yeah. What do you know in that, Shen, if we're closing out soon? Yeah, yeah. I actually had a cool question to pass around, but I think you already answered your answer, but we can maybe check it to you as we go around. Um, uh, you know, it, it, if anybody is our client and listening to us or anybody is listening to this um, to gain inspiration, um, most likely, just like with my own mentors and idols that I um, that inspire me, it's almost like you can see the amazing moves they do and you're like, wow, that's awesome, right? Um, but with those moves come thoughts and, and as much as we are talking about it, we're not immune to it. Right. So it's always, a if, we, if we can see it as we go through it, I feel like that's where I'm really starting to only just scratch the surface of my true power, um, with what answers are coming to me. It's almost like, um, uh, a new level will find me and the new level will find me by a major revelation. And then that revelation following that revelation will be a whole lot of whole lot of how what how why how what how and then i'll see all of that I'm, i'll chill and then a day or two later sometimes even a minute later majority of those hows one of those questions will be answered and find me and then as soon as that answer finds me following that how what how what, that's just the game right <laughs> so um you know when it came to uh experience online coaching etc um I sort of felt pulled in two directions. I started sort of like thinking, okay, which one do I put my energy into? How, 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 how? Relaxed. Uh, answer found me where it got put into one. I was like, cool. Um, so now that it's put into one, how do I market that? I, <laughs> I had all of those questions, relax. And then the how do I market that? How do I offer that? How do I package that? Sort of answered itself. And then um, who else is doing that? that led me to go look at other people doing it and start comparing because I followed that thought. And then I saw that. And then I realized that's totally irrelevant. How are people going to pay that? I've never charged something like that before. See that thought. So even as I jump to what I'll be doing next, um, as in doing next is what I currently am. It's a natural evolution to it. But the price points I'm going to be charging, um, uh, what other people may say, that's another one I'm thinking, I'm already comparing myself with other people in LinkedIn who is doing what I'm doing. And I'm like, oh, shit, I don't know anything about this. It's quite intriguing. These are the natural um, st struggles or thoughts that even I see. Um, and I feel it's it's powerful for us to share um, for ourselves openly um, and also for the viewers to be like, okay, the shit guys and superhuman, um, Kenji and John aren't fucking cyborgs, you know? Um, what about for you, Kenji? If there were some some personal uh, thoughts that are arising with your current level jump and we're all jumping in levels. What are some of the ones you'd like to share? 
Yeah, uh, the biggest one would exactly be that, would be the how. Um, I feel like the, the pendulum thing um, that we always talk about, it's like you'd be full on thoughts on one side and then the other side you'd be like, no thought. And then in the middle you'd be seeing thoughts, right? So I feel for me, the how, um, you know, like what do I do? Like all these sort of thoughts, they're, they're normal, right? You, you start seeing it and it's sort of like a, a broken record if you kind of want to put it that way it's like you start hearing that in the back of your mind it's like how what um and then you you, you know you, you hear it enough to a point where you start seeing it and then you know it could be the same question but in a different way that your mind just be like it just chucks it to you right um so i'm starting to see that now i'm starting to see like the how being asked in a different way and it's like, it's the same question. And now I'm like, oh, well, I can just focus on what I love doing, which is coaching, um, experience online and, and, and tech, right? So just like, why don't you just focus on that? The how the, and all of that will, you know, be answered as I go through, as I, like John said, just take that action. Um, and through the action, you find the answer because that's the moment. Um, so that's what I'm experiencing personally right now. It's like the how, the what, all these thoughts, um, and it's cool to see that. And sometimes you have to experience it, you know, because you haven't experienced before, you're unconscious to it. Once you make that conscious, right, um, you know, you, you start seeing it. Uh, I can't remember the quote by Carl Jung, but like, um, you got to make the unconscious conscious, otherwise you call it fate, right? Um, so you start making all these unconscious thoughts conscious, and you start seeing it, and then you're not dictated by that GPS to continue asking the how, continue being, you know, procrastinating, being overwhelmed, being stopped by your thoughts. And I feel like that's, you know, for me, it has been powerful, uh, especially the last few weeks. It's just like, just seeing that, um, <laughs> the repeated broken record of the how, the what, and, and, and everything. So yeah, it's just really beautiful to see it now. So um, what about yourself, John? Same question. Yeah, thoughts, they, they... It's, it's a big question, you know what I mean? And, and as you said, Kanji, a lot of the time it's, it's unconscious, even for someone like myself that's practiced this um, for a little while, you know, and for, and for you guys, I'm sure that's the case for you as well. But as Shent was saying, you know, figuring out or coming to having a how find you, it leads you to the next how, it leads you to the next why or an extension of your previous why. Um, so like me trying to define that now, it's like, when, when we speak of life being a game, you know, we, 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 we don't really understand that, you know, because we, we get caught up in the moment. Sometimes it definitely does not feel like a fucking game. Do you know what I mean? And so it's like a game of never ending infinite noughts and crosses uh, with yourself. So it's you versus yourself. And, and as you get to that position, we just about to finish that line you place that, 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 that barrier in front of you. And now you need to come back. You need to think, okay, now, now we do this way. And it's, it's a constant game of finding that solution and then having to grow through and, 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 and improve. Right. And so that's, if I, if I relate that now to my thought, there, there's always been, I think something that's so natural to everyone. When you, when you come to that next step, um, the same problem will find you because it's so normal. So if we talk specifically about money, it's like something I heard a while ago. It's so much easier to make $10,000 than it is to hold on to it. So that, that thought finds me to this level now, you know, having made multiple consecutive weeks upwards of $25,000. It's like, why, why, why is that thought still finding me? What, what is the solution to this now? What, how, why, you know what I mean? So it's, it's interesting, you know, just to close everything off, Shen, you know, what have you heard from from this episode i believe we've touched on presence and awareness and actually gone down multiple avenues mm -hmm. um personal to each right um so what 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 closing words would you have man yeah it's quite funny um mm. it finds you just as kanji was speaking the most recent how and why was just answered then so i just like had to write it down and that was like an integral part of how this next business model flows um and it's like oh that's obvious it was, and it wasn't even anything kanji said it was just me being present here in the moment with you guys to feel something to answer something and answer found me um just as honestly in the start of this um i was thinking about a few things but i was here so 
I reckon that's a great way to summarize presence is like you could be sitting somewhere, you could be in front of the answer, you could be with your coach, with your mentor in a new program. But if you aren't present in any of those things, you're going to be missing the thing itself, um, such as life itself. So yeah, I would say that's a prime example of it. And that's how I would um, close it is, is just be here and, and everything you're looking for is here. How about yourself, Kanji? Yeah, that's so beautiful, bro. Um, <laughs> it's like the answers are always in front of you. It's just, are you, are you seeing it? Are you seeing it? So I, I feel that for me is, is, is real powerful. It's like, you know, we're, we're always chasing things, uh, thoughts, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. We're always chasing thoughts. We're always chasing, you know, dollar signs and, you know, targets, achievements. But we, you know, just have to spend that moment here and now just to smell the roses. And like Shen said, just like what happened, you know, the answers are literally right in front of you. So, yeah, that's my closing words. And what about yourself, John, just to close it off? Yeah, man, it's beautiful. There's, there's different voices that, that find me in different moments um, that awareness brings to me, right? When, when there's a solution, when there's a, one of these revelations, as you had, Shen, you know, um, being present definitely opens up that gateway. Um, it shows you, it gives you the lens um, of clarity. Like literally, I can't see shit without these. But, um, you know what I mean? And it's like the voice that finds me when, when, I, when I reach one of these moments is different. Um, but it's like, and as the very common and familiar saying goes, um, get the fuck up, enjoy the process and stop being a pussy. Uh, be here, be now, love this. This, this grows you, this evolves you, this moves you, it inspires others. It's so magical. It's so real at the same time. And uh, yeah, I feel like I want to quote someone on that, but that's that's something I just sort of <laughs> out of nowhere. So um, yeah, it's, it's been a beautiful episode with you guys and I look forward to uh, what we uncover next week. Awesome. See you next awesome. week, guys. Beautiful.